I don't know about your parents, but my parents never talked about money. I mean, they, they talked about money, but not Not specifics. their personal finances, yeah. no. But they talked uh, a lot about finances. And so anyway, what brought this whole thing up is that uh, last Friday, we had an appointment to go talk to our uh, financial advisor. We got called <laughs> into the principal's <laughs> office. <laughs> it's, uh, that's, that's what it felt like. That's what, yeah, Jennifer felt like she was going to the principal's office. You ever been to the principal's office? You know, you, you, you know you didn't do anything wrong, but there was that one thing that nobody knew about or you think that nobody knows it, knew about. Well, he felt like he was getting called yeah. into the principal or the uh, bishop's, B office. bishop's office. And I did have a confession to make, and I'll, I'll tell you about that. But now we, uh, we, it's been a few years since we've talked to him and, and we're getting close. And when I say close, I, I wish it was a year or two away, but it's like three or four. Yeah, four years away from retirement. Yeah. But we want to just check and make sure and take we were a, on track. You know, see where we're at and make sure that we were uh, proceeding or progressing like we wanted to. But uh, you know, I, I said my parents never talked about money, but they, they did. Uh, I started working when I was four years old. My older brother had a paper route, and I started when I was four years old helping him by delivering two or three newspapers to our neighbors that lived right next door and across the street. Uh, but at four years old, it's kind of nice to have, you know, a, a nickel and a quarter come your way at the end of the month to, to spend on candy or whatever we want. But that, in my early days, that's when I first learned, uh, you know, about money. Uh, every month, my mom would gather all the kids around and we'd get paid for delivering newspapers and she had a little stack of money for everybody. Uh, according to how many papers that we had delivered during the month. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that she did was to take 10% off mm -hmm. and we'd fill out our little tithing slips and envelopes and then give that to our bishop uh, Sunday morning. So the first thing I learned, and I've, I've done it all my life, is, is take the 10% off yeah. and, and, and give it back. Give it back. Yeah. Uh, then what was left from that, left over, uh, and every one of us did the same thing. We'd, we'd divide it in two, we'd divide it in half, and half would fill out another slip, and that was to go into our savings account. So we'd, we'd put half of it in savings, and the other half we'd get to pocket and put in our pockets, and we'd spend on whatever we wanted. Um, typically shows and candy and... <laughs> Mostly candy. <laughs> We'd sneak into the shows and <laughs> take the candy with. <laughs> but uh, you that's are naughty. yeah, yeah. Mm. But that's that's, that's another that's another yeah. video. But, so I learned early on, and I had a checking account when I was a senior, and my credit card I just uh, or my debit card that I just got in the mail, you know, member since 1976. Oh yeah. So. Um, I knew where every dime ever went. I, I reconciled my uh, savings and my checking accounts. I knew where every every penny went. Uh, we got married, and we were uh, pretty much on the same same page. And and we got married, and we were in school. Uh, we moved down to Logan, went to college. I was busy working. I, I had a job at the local cheese factory, Shriver's and um, people back in Wisconsin would know Shriver's, that's where the headquarters was. But uh, I worked, uh, I was going to school full time, uh, raising, you were raising kids, I was just uh, there to tag along. But Jennifer took over the finances a year into... I'm surprised you let me. Oh yeah, well... I mean, not, you know, I say let me, I mean, it's our money. He, what he yeah. makes is our money yeah. because we, that's the way we, that we work. I mean, oh, absolutely. We're a team. And, and I, I soon found that it was easier for her to take care and take that load off of my shoulders. Uh, not you that, trusted me. Yeah, oh yeah, I trusted you, I, I oh. had to. <laughs> Um, but she did, and to this day, uh, she still does the finances. Uh, she did, she proved herself, and not that I was testing her or anything, but it was just something that she had to do because I, I couldn't, I didn't, didn't have, have the time. Didn't have the time. 
Uh, she never reconciled the checkbook. That was our only financial fight that we ever had. <laughs> that I knew where every dime and went. And guess what? And yeah, guess what? We're still alive. We, we, we never lost. If we lost anything, it was a dollar at the I most or two. I, you, you were on top of things and you yeah, knew where knew the money where, was. I knew it. So, yeah, we had been married just about a year and we were living in student housing. And Jennifer, you know, we'd talked about buying a trailer. There was some uh, a trailer court there that was considered uh, student housing, but you had to buy your own trailer. So Jennifer had talked to some of the girls that were living over there uh, with their husbands and their families, and she, no, I want to get a trailer. So well, it it was in a court that main it it held its value. The trailers that were in yeah. those well, it, courts yeah, it was held in, their value. It was good. interesting because. Uh, we bought a 1966 mm -hmm. or 67 66 66 Cranbrook uh, we lived in it for a year and a half we sold it bought a nicer we one. we made money on the trailer mm -hmm. uh, we bought a nicer trailer we had our name on the waiting list so you could bring a trailer in we knew that if you could bring a trailer in, you could make a lot more money so mm -hmm. we we went into the office put our name on the list we were like 48th, 49th on the list. And because we were in school so many years, we <laughs> knew we were going to make the well, list. Well, we, we had no idea. But they had expanded the trailer park, and as the the names were crossed off because either they had graduated, graduated moved on. or they decided they didn't want to go out and bring a trailer on, uh, we, were, we ended up being like fourth or fifth on the list, and there were... I think 15 or 20 courts. Uh, so anyway, we made some money on our on our trailers. So when we left college, we well yeah. we left without we, any debt and like 10 yeah. I don't know 13 thousand dollars in our pocket. That's pretty good for college students yeah. to leave without debt and a little money in their pocket. So that was a good boost for us. Yeah. We didn't really save much money in college uh, because every dime that we had went to. Uh, feeding ourselves, paying the, the, the mortgage on the trailer, uh, and, and, and the and registration. registration and book fees. And we were constantly, constantly in our overdraft. Oh yeah. It was just like, oh, we'd get our overdraft because yeah. school had come up, whatever, we'd pay what we needed to pay, and then our overdraft was up. And so Chad, yeah. had, he'd work overtime, uh, get the overdraft uh, back fun, down. A funny story about the overdraft is that it started out as, you know, 300. And I'd never, use, never, never used the overdraft when I was in high school. Oh. <laughs> and so we figured out how that worked. Uh, and I don't know if it was a good thing or a bad thing, but it started off at $300 and it, we, we'd limit it, then we'd pay it off, limit it, pay it off. Then we'd get a letter in the mail. Oh, you're such a good <laughs> client. We're going to up your, up, your, up your overdraft to 600 Your overdraft protection. Uh, oh, okay, so our overdraft protection went to 600 We'd limit it, pay it off, limit it, pay it off. Then they upped it to 2000 So it went from like 300 to like three or 4000 by the time we left college. But uh, we, had, we, we got it under control and we, uh, we learned that, yeah, it's not a good that thing to do That was always stressful to me. That was yeah. always stressful to try and stay in the in the budget. Yeah, well, and whenever we had to make a cut, it was always in the same spot. It was always in the food. Yep. The food budget. Potatoes and eggs. Yep. Potatoes and eggs. Potatoes and eggs. <laughs> we weren't always perfect with our money. Uh, we we got into nope. uh, an investment scheme where we didn't quite lose six figures, but close, close. enough mm -hmm. <laughs> that close enough. Uh, we, we lost on what we thought was a real good investment. Um, we, but we, we survived it. We paid back our kids cause we, you know, wanted to make sure that what their little bit of investment into it was covered. And so, uh, that was, uh, we, we learned from that. I hope, I hope our kids <laughs> learned from that. Uh, and we've, we've kind of pushed on this, this, um, you know, financial conservatism, Conser conservative, is that right? you call it, uh, to our kids. And Jennifer came across, uh, and this was a few years ago, she Long listened to a, a, a radio program, and <laughs> yeah, Dave Ramsey, this isn't a... No. No, this is not a, 
a brand deal or an endorsement. No, but, but the reason why I liked him is because he was saying the same thing that we had been taught all our lives. Yeah. And I just, I, I listened to him and read his book and it just clicked. It, this is, it just, it he rang, laid it out really, really simple. Yeah. It, it made so much sense uh, how he lays it out and you know, if you're in, you know, financial trouble, it's, he makes it really easy well, to get out of it. And, and I came across him after we had lost so much money. Yeah. And it just, it was kind of healing to me to read it. And, and I got excited and thought we can do this. We can yeah. get back, we can get back on top of things. Yeah. And so we worked really, really hard to get over that yeah, loss. I, yeah, we... It, that loss was so bad. It was like three days before Christmas that I found out about this. Yeah. And I literally was sick. I literally laid on the couch and, and was physically sick. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, it just dreams. It, it, yeah. it didn't yeah. just feel like, it wasn't just money. It was a dream. Yeah, we, we had plans that we wanted you know? to do as a family yeah. and together and... Yeah. And all that came crashing down, and yeah. uh, but you, you you don't let that control yeah. or consume your life. Yeah, you can feel bad. You should feel yeah. bad, but you and should learn from it, it too. Get over it. Yeah. And you, you pull yourself back up and and keep going. But those eight baby steps, I think there's eight, mm -hmm. you know, right now. seven or eight seven. baby steps. But it, it just seems to make so much sense. And if you're interested, Google Dave Ramsey, and you can probably find those eight steps online. Uh, and he's got a radio show, but anyway, really good and excellent uh, um, financial advice. There's a, a pamphlet that our church puts out. It's called One for the Money. I'll leave a link to that. And, down and below. we'll we'll and try and find online. a link for that yeah. and, and put it down below. And again, it's the same thing that basically he teaches, and that's to get a budget, you know, get a savings account, get a an emergency account. And on paper, every month, spend every dime. Put yep. that that's our budget. Every every penny every dollar is allocated to something on paper yeah is spent not not at the store yeah, but yeah right Doesn't you're, you're spending that money into your savings account yeah. into an emergency fund uh, an education fund you know uh, food clothing mm -hmm. uh, insurances those kinds of things but every every dollar gets spent yeah. even if that's in entertainment we eat out a lot more than we used to. <laughs> well, we, we used to have a budget item for uh, video rentals. Uh, they started renting videos when we were in college, and so we had we had uh, rent a. Yeah, we talked earlier about our uh, checkup, and uh, we went in, and our homes paid for. Everything's good. We've got different money and different things. We've diversified where our money's going. Uh, I've got a little bit of a pension from. The airbag uh, company that I worked for. Um, I've got another little pension that I'm working on now. The company that I work for. Uh, pensions are kind of a thing of the past, and so you really have to kind of, you know, look at your 401ks and other uh, savings tools to to help, you know, prepare yourself for retirement. And but I, I did feel real guilty because he says, "Oh yeah, you guys are looking real good. You're." You're, now you're completely out of debt, right? Uh, no, <laughs> I took a loan out for Tabasco. <laughs> Tabasco's our truck. Mm -hmm. And and I and I felt bad because, yeah, we, we, we went into debt. We but I said, it's out. part of our retirement plan because the plan was to have a, a nice pickup yeah. before he retired. Before I retire, I wanted to have my death truck. So, so he, that he it, okayed and, it. And it'll be paid for by the time I yeah. retire. Soon. So oh, that's that was okay, uh, but we really wanted you know just to sit for a minute and talk about you know finances because everybody's a little bit interested in how other people are doing it and what lessons they've learned from and uh, I you know I hope this is encouraging and not discouraging to you. I hope that you just hey get the book. Yeah, yeah. I mean I'm that that. He's not paying me to say that. Get the book. I loved it. Yeah. Um, regardless of what stage of life you're in, uh, it's always a good thing to have a financial yeah. checkup. Yeah. So, yeah. if you, <laughs> I feel like I don't know. If if you have enjoyed this video, 
give it a thumbs up and go over to my Instagram and tell us what if you want to see or any more of these or not. Yeah. Any, any other advice yeah. or information that we might be able maybe, to Maybe Maybe we could go into distill. a little more detail. This was kind of an overall picture. Yeah, just picture. an overall. Um, you know, and, and basically, you know, we, we pay our tithing, we, we put money away for savings, we have a budget, we know where pretty much most of our dollars go. Yeah. Uh, Except for when I go to Alaska and I go. Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> I know where that money, <laughs> I know, I knew where it went. <laughs> but uh, He gets these little notifications well, yeah. when, when the credit card gets used. Yeah. And so just before... I and and it's, be, and it's not that I'm spying on no, you. No, 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 no. It no, is, it's, I want to just know. before I spent the money, I text him and I says, it's okay, don't worry. Yeah, just, just, just ignore the next couple of texts you're going to get from our credit card. Oh, and so I did. Yeah, he's good. He's good and he's good to me. Yeah, yeah. well, anyway, thanks for watching. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. I wanted to get on here and add just a couple more things, and that is that sometimes at the end of the month, the numbers just don't add up. No matter what you do, I want to tell you, it's going to work out. It is going to be all right. And sometimes it can be awful discouraging, but don't you quit. Don't you give up. You just know that it's going to work out somehow, some way. You keep your faith. You just know that that's that it's not the end of the world and it's going to be okay many issues are extremely difficult Heavenly Father knows you're struggling and you just put your trust in him and do the very best that you can that's all you can do sometimes that's all you can do is your very best but it'll work out and I am a firm believer in paying your tithing. We pay our tithing first. It's the first thing we do every month and it's what we've always done. And Heavenly Father will bless your efforts if you do that. I know it. Anyway, I just had that feeling that I wanted to tell you that. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.